Hi there. Welcome back to our next interesting session on Java. In this session we would learn about collections and reflections in Java. We will learn about collection framework its different classes with lab session and we will also learn reflection framework with its labs. Let's start it. First of all we would discuss about collections in Java. Collections in Java is a framework that provides an architecture to store and manipulate the group of objects. All the operations that you perform on a data such as searching, sorting, insertion, manipulation, deletion etc. can be performed by Java collections. Java collection simply means a single unit of objects. Java collection framework provides many interfaces like set, list, queue, DQ, etc. and classes like array list, vector, linked list, priority queue, hash set, linked hash set, tree set, etc. You can see the hierarchy of collection framework on your screen. We would try to cover all important topics of the collection framework. Let's start it with iterator interface. Iterator interface provides the facility of iterating the elements in forward direction only. Methods of iterator interface. There are only three methods in the iterator interface. They are public boolean has next method, it returns true if iterator has more elements. Public object next method, it returns the element and moves the cursor pointer to the next element. And public void remove method, it removes the last elements returned by the iterator. It is rarely used. Now let's see the first class of collections, array list. Java array list class uses a dynamic array for storing the elements. It inherits abstract list class and implements list interface. The important points about Java array list class are Java array list class can contain duplicate elements. Java array list class maintains insertion order. Java array list class is non-synchronized. Java array list allows random access because array works at the index basis. And in Java array list class, manipulation is slow because a lot of shifting needs to be occurred if any element is removed from the array list. Let's see it with an example. Collection frameworks classes are in Java's UTIL package so you need to import the package into your program. Refer to the program shown on your screen. Create the object of array list class. Array list class is a generic class so you need to specify the data type into the diamond box. As you can see I have written string in the box. Now with the object of array list add your string value by using add method. It will append the value to the end of the list. Now create the object of iterator class to traverse the list. You can see the code. Save the file. Compile it and run it. You can see the output is having duplicate values. Now let's discuss about Java linked list. Java linked list class uses doubly linked list to store the elements. It provides a linked list data structure. It inherits the abstract list class and implements list and DIC interfaces. The important points about Java linked list are Java linked list class can contain duplicate elements. Java linked list class maintains insertion order. Java linked list class is non-synchronized. In Java linked list class, manipulation is fast because no shifting needs to be occurred. And Java linked list class can be used as list, stack or queue. Let's see it with an example. Linked list is same as array list. First of all import the UTIL package as shown in the program. Create your class and create linked list class object with the data type defined in the diamond box as you did in the array list program. Add elements to your list by using add method. I have added four elements to the list, as you can see. Now use the iterator to get the value or traverse. Save your file and run it. You can see the output. It is same as array list. Now let's have a look at list interface. List interface is the sub interface of collection. It contains methods to insert and delete elements in index spaces. It is a factory of list iterator interface. 
it defines a list as essentially a more flexible version of an array. Elements have a specific order, and duplicate elements are allowed. Elements can be placed in a specific position. They can also be searched for within the list. Let's see the example. Import the UTIL package into your program. Create array list or linked list to add values. In this program we are going the search or get the element from specified index. List is the parent interface of array list and linked list class. We can use get method to fetch record or element from the list, as we did in this example. Use the iterator to traverse your list. Now save your file. Run it, now you can see the element at second position is shown on the screen. Now let's discuss about hash set class. Java hash set class is used to create a collection that uses a hash table for storage. It inherits the abstract set class and implements set interface. The important points about Java hash set class are Hash set stores the elements by using a mechanism called hashing and Hash set contains unique elements only. Let's see it with an example. Import UTIL package first of all. Then create your class. Now create hash set object as shown, and add the elements using add method. As you can see I have added one element twice but hash set would not accept duplicate value. Now let's iterate it. Now save your program. Compile it and run it. Now you can see the output. Duplicate value is not shown. Now let's talk about Java linked hash set class. Java linked hash set class is a hash table and linked list implementation of the set interface. It inherits hash set class and implements set interface. The important points about Java linked hash set class are Contains unique elements only like hash set. Provides all optional set operations and permits null elements, and maintains insertion order. Let's see it with an example. Write program, and import UTIL package. Create class and then create linked hash set class object and add elements to the set or list, as shown in the example. Linked hash set class inherits set class so it would also not accept duplicate value as hash set class. You can see I have tried to add same value twice but it won't accept it. Iterate your list as shown. Make sure you are doing the program while watching this video. Save your file, compile it and run it. You can see output on your screen. We tried to add Ravi twice but it is showing only one, as it does not accept duplicate values. Now let's discuss about Java tree set class. Java tree set class implements the set interface that uses a tree for storage. It inherits abstract set class and implements navigable set interface. The objects of tree set class are stored in ascending order. The important points about Java tree set class are Contains unique elements only like hash set. Access and retrieval times are quiet fast. And Maintains ascending order. Let's see it with an example. Open your notepad or editor to write program. Import Java UTIL package into your program. Create your program. Create an object of tree set class and add elements to the list or set. The program is same like earlier programs. I have added same value twice. Now use the iterator to traverse the list. Save your file. Open your command prompt and run your code. You can see the output in ascending order and it has not added duplicate elements to the list. Now let's discuss about Java map interface. A map contains values on the basis of key that is key and value pair. Each key and value pair is known as an entry. Map contains only unique keys. 
Map is useful if you have to search, update, or delete elements on the basis of key. Entry is the sub-interface of map. So we will be accessed it by map.entry name. It provides methods to get key and value. By this entry interface we can get values or can delete any value from the list. It returns key pair value. Let's see it with an example. Open your notepad and write the program as shown. Import the Java UTIL package. Create the object of map interface and add values to it. Map interface does not accepts duplicate value. You can get your entered value by using for loop, you can see on your screen. Now save your file and run it. You can see output in the form of key pair value. Now let's discuss about hash map class. Java hash map class implements the map interface by using a hash table. It inherits abstract map class and implements map interface. The important points about Java hash map class are A hash map contains values based on the key. It contains only unique elements. It may have one null key and multiple null values. And It maintains no order. Let's understand it with an example. Open your notepad and import Java 8 package. Create the object of hash map class with its key and value data types. Add the elements to the list as shown. Now use the for loop to traverse the list using map.entry and entry set. Save your file. Open your command prompt. Compile your program and run it. You can see the output on your screen. It does not have duplicate values and it is sorted list in ascending order. Now let's discuss about linked hash map class. Java linked hash map class is hash table and linked list implementation of the map interface, with predictable iteration order. It inherits hash map class and implements the map interface. The important points about Java linked hash map class are A linked hash map contains values based on the key. It contains only unique elements. It may have one null key and multiple null values. And It is same as hash map instead maintains insertion order. Let's see the example. Open your notepad and import Java 8 package. Create the object of linked hash map class with its key and value data types. Add the elements to the list as shown. Now use the for loop to traverse the list using map.entry and entry set. Save your file. Open your command prompt. Compile your program and run it. You can see the output on your screen. It does not have duplicate values and it is sorted list in ascending order. Now let's discuss about tree map class. Java tree map class implements the map interface by using a tree. It provides an efficient means of storing key value pairs in sorted order. The important points about Java tree map class are A tree map contains values based on the key. It implements the navigable map interface and extends abstract map class. It contains only unique elements. It cannot have null key but can have multiple null values. And It is same as hash map instead maintains ascending order. Let's see the example. Open your notepad and import Java 8 package. Create the object of tree map class with its key and value data types. Add the elements to the list as shown. Now use the for loop to traverse the list using map.entry and entry set. Save your file. Open your command prompt. Compile your program and run it. You can see the output on your screen. It does not have duplicate values and it is sorted list in ascending order. Now let's see hash table class in Java. Java hash table class implements a hash table, which maps keys to values. 
it inherits dictionary class and implements the map interface. The important points about Java hash table class are A hash table is an array of list. Each list is known as a bucket. The position of bucket is identified by calling the hash code method. A hash table contains values based on the key. It contains only unique elements. It may have not have any null key or value. And It is synchronized. Let's see it with an example. Open your notepad and write program. Import Java UTIL package. Create the object of hash table class. Add value to the list according to its key and value. Now traverse the list using map.entry interface. Save your file. Open the command prompt and compile your code. Now run your file. You can see output on your screen. Now let's discuss about collection class in Java. Java collection class is used exclusively with static methods that operate on or return collections. It inherits object class. The important points about Java collections class are Java collection class supports the polymorphic algorithms that operate on collections. And Java collection class throws a null pointer exception if the collections or class objects provided to them are null. Let's see it with an example. Open your notepad and import Java UTIL package. Now create a list using list class. Add some values to it as you can see in the program shown. Now with the help of collection class you can add more elements to your list directly. Refer to the code. Collection is a static class so with the name of collection class you can use add all method to add the list with existing list. Copy the code as shown. Now save your file. Compile it and run it. You can see the output. Now let's discuss about Java Reflections. Java Reflection is a process of examining or modifying the runtime behavior of a class at runtime. The java.lang.class, class provides many methods that can be used to get metadata, examine and change the runtime behavior of a class. The java.lang and java.lang.reflect packages provide classes for Java Reflection. The Reflection API is mainly used in IDE, Integrated Development Environment, e.g. Eclipse, my Eclipse, NetBeans etc. Debugger. Test tools etc. The java.lang.class, class performs mainly two tasks. Provides methods to get the metadata of a class at runtime. And. Provides methods to examine and change the runtime behavior of a class. There are three ways to get the instance of class, class. They are as follows. For name method of class, class. Get class method of object, class, and the dot class syntax. Let's discuss for name method. For name method of class, class is used to load the class dynamically. Returns the instance of class class, and it should be used if you know the fully qualified name of class. This cannot be used for primitive types. Let's see the simple example of for name method. Open your notepad and create a blank class as I did, like simple. Now create another class with main method as you can see it. Now create the object of class, class, and pass the class name in its argument. Refer to the program. Now you can print the class name by giving get name method in your print statement. Save your file and run it. You will get the class name of the class that you passed in the argument. 
Now let's see get class method of object class. It returns the instance of class, class. It should be used if you know the type. Moreover, it can be used with primitives. Let's see it with an example. Create an empty class. Now create a class with a method which accepts object argument. In the method create the object of class, and get the object class. You can refer to the program for the code. Now write the main method. Create the object of your class and run the method. Save your file and execute it. You can see the output has the same class name that's object has been passed to the method. Now let's see. The dot class syntax. If a type is available but there is no instance then it is possible to obtain a class by appending dot class to the name of the type. It can be used for primitive data type also. See it through example. Open your notepad and create a class. In its main method, create an object of class and assign boolean dot class to its object. Now print the get name method. Again do it with the some existing class and print the name of the class using get name method. Save your file and execute it. You can see the output as boolean and class test. Let's discuss new instance method. The new instance method of class class and constructor class is used to create a new instance of the class. The new instance method of class class can invoke zero argument constructor whereas new instance method of constructor class can invoke any number of arguments. So constructor class is preferred over class class. See it through an example. Create a class with a method having some message. See the code on your screen. Now create another class having main method. In this main method create class object and associate new instance method to the class. Save your file. Open command prompt and execute your program. You can see output on the screen. Hope you liked the session. In our next session we will discuss about remote method invocation in short RMI, its object, and lot more on RMI. Till then thank you.